Our gospel this morning is from John chapter 14. It's verses 23 23 through 29. And uh, here uh, we're kind of getting the part of Jesus' farewell discourse. So he has told his disciples that it's time for him to go or die on the cross. And uh, he's giving them some last words. And so uh, we can look at this gospel very clearly and apply it to ourselves. We can ask ourselves, do I love Jesus? So do we love Jesus? And of course, Christians will answer, well, yes, of course I love Jesus. I'm a Christian, right? So that's the correct answer. But Jesus says something in this gospel. He says that uh, whoever loves me will keep my word. And so it seems that the one who keeps Jesus' word is the one who loves him for real. And he says, but the one who does not keep his words does not love Jesus, uh, since Jesus himself has said, whoever does not love me does not keep my words. So if we want to know if we love Jesus for real, we should ask ourselves, what are his words or word so that I may keep them. He talks about his word in the first sentence for those who love him, then he says, does not keep my words, plural. So what is he referring to? What are those words? Because if we do keep them, not only is Jesus gonna love us, but his Father will as well, and they will both come to us and make their dwelling with us. God will live with you. You will live with God. So what are his words? What are these words? They are nothing other than the Catholic Church's teachings. And we go into a long dispute about how Jesus' teachings are the Catholic Church's teachings, but we'll save that for another day. Uh, But they are. Uh, The teachings of the Catholic Church can be summarized as love God and love neighbor. They come out of the Ten Commandments. They come out of different tradition and those things that have been handed down by Jesus and the apostles, the organic development of the church's teachings, but basically they say love God and love neighbor. Isn't that what Jesus said? Love God with your whole heart, mind, soul, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself. What else has he said about love? He said no one has greater love than to lay down his life for his friends. And he has also said to love one another as I have loved you. So that is the self-emptying, self-sacrificing love that Jesus is referring to. And this is what the Catholic Church's teachings lead us to, is to teach us how to love better, to love God and love neighbor. So the Catholic Church's teachings are very specific about how Jesus asks us to love God and love neighbor, and therefore, what do good disciples do? They extensively study the teachings of the church so that, they can, so that they can become better lovers of God and neighbor. The good disciple studies or meditates on Jesus' word or words frequently so that we are able to learn more about whom we claim to love. Those who keep my word will love me. Those who do not keep my word do not love me. So why is this important again? Why should we keep Jesus' word? Because my Father will love him and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. And so by simply keeping the teachings of the Catholic Church, we keep Jesus' word. And his words we receive, they are the Father's. Jesus does not do anything separate from the Father. And if our Father God is with us, then who can stand against us? What does that mean to us? It means that we receive all of God's care and protection for us throughout our whole lives just by keeping his word. Is it difficult to live Jesus' words? Is it difficult to keep them? Is it difficult to live by all the Catholic Church's teachings? Yes, you bet it is. Try as you might, you will search the Bible for Jesus' words. Nowhere does he say, come and follow me because discipleship is easy and you're going to have a great time. He says, come follow me, deny yourself, pick up your cross. Discipleship is not for the faint of heart. So what do we need? We need grace, but we need a helper, an advocate. 
We are not without God's awesome assistance, which is one of the primary reasons the Father sends the Holy Spirit as the helper. The Holy Spirit assists our study and meditation on Jesus' word by teaching us everything we need to know and remind us of everything Jesus taught. It's what the Holy Spirit does. We have to apply ourselves too. We have to put ourselves in that place. So in order to receive and love God, simply live Jesus' teachings. Live his word to love God and neighbor, which again are the Catholic Church's teachings. So what else happens when we live the Catholic Church's teachings, or at least we make an honest effort, a dedicated honest effort to live them? There's a bonus involved. What else does he say in this passage? He gives us peace. There is a peace. Not the kind of peace that comes from anywhere in the world, not the kind that comes from humankind or our designs, but rather true peace, his peace, the peace of Jesus Christ. The Jesus peace that dwells within us is a side effect of ordering our souls, our being, our lives to that which humanity, our humanity, requires. What does our humanity require? Our humanity requires loving God and neighbor keeping Jesus' word and living the Catholic Church's teachings. If we go directly at peace, we're always going to miss it. Peace is a side effect of ordering our souls, our lives to God. That's where peace comes from. It comes directly from God so that his life can be lived through me. The true peace of Jesus comes from living the practice of our religion, the practice of our religion. If I love Jesus, I keep his word. If I love Jesus, I don't miss Mass on Sundays or Holy Days of Obligation without a really good reason. If I love Jesus, I keep his word. It's part of being in relationship with him. There are expectations in relationships. Do you love your spouses? The correct answer is yes. But do you live by their expectations? There are expectations in relationships. There are parameters, there are boundaries. Jesus does expect something from us. He does expect us to keep his word. And nonetheless though, even with all of God on our side, the peace of Jesus dwelling in our souls somehow evades us, usually because we're looking for peace in the wrong place. And something else Jesus mentions here, we get troubled and afraid. There are plenty of opportunities in our life to be troubled and afraid. Uncertainty and ambiguity are a normal part of the faith experience. A normal part of the faith experience, uncertainty and ambiguity. It must be if our faith is going to be formed as a bedrock of trust and reliance upon God and Him alone. By nature or by definition, this is what faith does. It believes when it's, there's no good reason to believe. It believes in a loving God when there doesn't seem to be enough evidence for that. That's what faith does. Faith tells us the truth about God, even when the evidence in front of us doesn't look that way. There has to be a certain amount of doubt to challenge us so that our faith continues to grow. That's why Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid, but rather believe. Have confidence in me, have faith in me, even though I'm going away, I am still always with you. Believe that you have the advocate, the Holy Spirit, the amazing and mystifying helper of your soul to be triumphant and victorious over any trial, any challenge of life, or any difficulty to teach and remind you how to live and remain in God's love and his peace. Advocate literally means one who stands by the side of a defendant. One who stands by the side of a defendant. Since our faith in Jesus is our victory and our faith is readily assaulted, we need someone to defend us. We need an advocate. The most powerful advocate of all is the third person of the most holy and triune God. Jesus has never left us. Jesus has always been with us. The Holy Spirit is the continued presence of Jesus on earth. He is a truth-telling spirit 
in a world of lies that testifies on behalf of Jesus Christ in defense of him, whose teachings we are called to live by. And the Holy Spirit reminds us of the things that Jesus said and continues to reveal things Jesus was unable to convey. As far as the economy of salvation, that revelation is closed. But the personal revelation between you and Jesus is always open. There's always more to learn about Jesus. We can't love who we don't know. I can always learn more about Jesus so I can love him more. And if I meditate on his word and I keep his word, I will love him. That's exactly what Jesus has said. So that personal revelation is always open to us. There's always more to know. Even in spouses who've been married 50, 60, 70 years, they still can learn more about the other. The person is a mystery in itself. There's no limits to learning the other. And when it comes to the divine person of Jesus Christ, there is even more to learn. So we keep his word. And if we keep his word, we can say with great confidence, I do love Jesus.